and I'm going to be talking to you today about the elements of art in donuts. What? Donuts? You heard it. I love donuts, I bet you do too, so I thought we'd use this as an example for the important building blocks of art. We're going to be starting with the first building block of art, which is the building block called the line, which you probably have heard of. You use them every day. It's a uh, basically the path of an object moving through space. Second element of art is the element of shape. It's very important as well, and we're going to be using it in our donuts. It's uh, basically shapes are flat, enclosed areas that are two-dimensional, so just length and height. The third very important element of art is color, which is so much fun, and we're going to be doing lots of that today. The fourth one is value. Value, not like money value, not like how many donuts can you get for a dollar, but more how value describes the lightness and darkness of a surface. Texture is another one of the elements of art. I rather like this one. It's what happens when you throw sprinkles or drizzle glaze onto a donut. It describes the surface quality of an object. Mm. Space is another one of the elements of art, so we're going to be using it a little bit today. It just gives you a chance to show the illusion of depth. So maybe the donut hole would be a good way to describe that. And finally, the last element of art is going to be form. And form really is three-dimensional. So it is length, width, and height. And it can be viewed from many angles. You might have a tall donut, a fat, wide donut. We're going to check all those elements of art out just now. Let's get started. So we have here, if you take a peek at the samples, some of my art student friends have had a really, really fun time designing their specific donuts to their delicious taste. Uh, I have a nice little sample of my favorite kind of donut, which is a delicious glazed with strawberry frosting and sprinkles. So one of my friends had a very cute and unusual idea about using a baseball, his favorite sport, to make his favorite donut. You can see other options, frosting colors, sprinkles, drizzle, you name it. Let's get started. So to recap, we have the sample donut, which I did. I had a hard time choosing. I really like a lot of different types of donuts, but this one being a nice oval donut is a fun way to practice what type of uh, shapes that I could make. Now, that is one of the elements of art we talked about, shape. The way you make shapes, and I always like to remind my friends this, that you make a shape by, I think I'll use my wide Sharpie for this. You're going to make a shape by using your pencil or your marker, whatever you have handy, and we're going to be drawing a lovely, lovely line, another element of art, you guessed it, to create a shape. A line becomes a shape when it finishes up and touches the other side of it and creates a closed shape. All right, I'm going to tuck that donut aside for now because I'm starting to get hungry. And I'm starting with a blank page. Oops, I've got some lumps and bumps there. I better straighten that out. Um, I'm starting with a marker on my paper. You may have... Uh, you may have a different type of paper. I'm using one that has a spiral bound on one side. You could use a standard piece of paper as well, whatever you have handy. And the first thing I like to do before I start drawing is I kind of pay attention to my body and figure out how am I, am I comfortable? Do I feel like I need to stretch, wiggle my neck a little bit? Whatever it is to help make you feel happy and comfortable. This is all about you today, you and the donuts. All right, so I'm going to take my Sharpie marker and I'm going to kind of practice air draw to try and start with the very first step, which is drawing an oval in the center of the paper. Do you notice that I've turned my paper in the horizontal position? That's gonna help because I wanna fill up as much room in the paper as I can with this big donut. All right, so I have a Basically, I have the first thing I know I need to do is make an oval in the middle. What's the middle? 
find with your finger a little kind of center spot between the top and the bottom, the side and the side. This is a rectangle, so you can get as close as you want. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to start, the way I feel comfortable drawing is just by dragging my pen around the surface carefully. Ooh, that's not too bad. Just something like that. All right, the next step with that line that I created to make a closed oval shape, more elements of art, um, I'm pretty excited. I'm going to make another oval just like that one, but a baby oval because I'm now making the donut hole. Mm. The best part of the donut, if you ask me. So I'm going to be dragging my pen around again. If I need to practice or air draw a little bit, that's okay. And you know what? Sharpies are pretty permanent, so do your best. And if you goof up, just keep going. I know it's hard, but you can do it. Okay, so we drew a second shape, which is an oval. And then now we're going to draw a line. The line that we're going to draw, remember it's not a closed shape. It's just going to be one little line. And it's kind of like a, an arc or a curve that's going to match that top of that oval that I just drew. And it looks like this almost like a little eyeball in an eye, if you can imagine that. Sometimes that helps my friends envision it. So we're really getting cracking on this. I feel like maybe we need something. This is kind of a boring donut. Um, so right now I'm gonna throw in here something kind of a wiggly fun line and get ready, cause it's gonna look good. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is a wiggly wavy line one of the elements of art, and that is now my frosting line. That's the edge of my frosting. Donut underneath, oh, looking delicious. So I now remember there are some of the other elements of art that I wanted to use. I'm not gonna have to use all of them today if I don't feel like it. But one of the ones that I wanted to talk about was texture. Now texture being delicious sprinkles in this case. We do have some texture with the frosting against the base of the, or the bready yumminess of the donut. I can almost smell it now. Now, it's kind of funny. You have choices. It was shapes and sprinkles. You don't have to go with typical sprinkle shapes. You could do them, but you don't have to. You could do hearts, you could do stars, you could do something as fun as little circles or spirals or whatever you want. I'm gonna do some classic kind of curvy ovals, little little lumpy bumpies that are gonna look a bit like sprinkles. Now, and I'm not gonna clump all the sprinkles together in one spot because, boy, these don't look perfect. Good thing I'm not aiming for that, huh? Uh, I have to remind myself that sometimes because it tends to be a thing that I do. Maybe you do it too. Oh nice, I'm liking this. So I've got some sprinkles. Sometimes I was drawing ovals when I was doing this and it kind of looked like sesame seeds and I thought, no, 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 we're not making a bagel. It's a whole other drawing lesson, right? So here's some sprinkles. I'm not gonna spend too long in it because you gotta have the right amount of sprinkles and you gotta stop. All right, so we have some texture. We have, hmm, let's see what other element of art did I mention that I haven't covered yet. Ah, perhaps we need to do some shading. I think that would be fun. Now shading, I'm doing this with a marker because I really want you to see it at home. But you can draw this straight away with a colored pencil like I did. Here it is now. Um, so. I'm thinking about the shading. I remembered that I really liked how it looked when I took my pen and I shaded. This is where you're gonna wanna be careful and turn your paper if you need to, turn your pen if you need to. Uh, do whatever you need to do just to get the right position. Now, something interesting happens to the depth and the volume. I don't mean like, ah! Noisy, noisy. I mean, giving it the look that there's something inside. There's a hole inside of the donut. Okay, so now we have that. I'm showing that hole. I've got my frosting. I think I'm going to stop there. We're not going to overdo it with the elements. Um, and now is the time that you just want to take a peek at it and see if there's anything you need to do. 
I like to erase. I have my handy dandy little, little white pearl eraser. Use what you want. Use what you have if you don't have one. Just color right over it. No biggie. All right, so now I'm erasing. Doing my best to get rid of a lot of those. And my friend Miss Denise loaned me her fabulous Oh yes, look at that. This is a really great little thing. You can also use your sleeve. You can tip your paper up and tap it onto the ground. Just be careful that you don't uh, get mom mad and make the house messy. All right, so now I'd like for you to uh, go ahead and try your turn at this and see how you like it. And when we come back, I will add some color. excited now because I'm thinking about doing a different frosting color. For the first donut that I drew that you're seeing here, I did some kind of confetti sprinkles on a blueberry glaze. This time I'm looking at my colored pencils and I'm thinking about something different. Now I know that I don't think I'd like to eat a green donut, but perhaps a red donut or a purple donut. Hmm, you can tell I like the blue because it's a lot shorter than the rest of them. But I will leave the blue there for a little while and I'm gonna throw some beautiful red on. Now, this is a large surface for me to color right now. So normally I would take a lot more time to do this because it's so much fun. And it's very calming. But one thing that is good to do while you're coloring Oh yes, this is so good, I can already tell. Um, it's already so, I just love coloring because it's so calming. This is a very, very lovely red. I'm not applying the pressure very hard, so I'm getting a light red. What's happening now is I'm just keeping the same direction. I think you probably know this secret about colored pencils, even crayons, even markers. But if you don't know it, let me share with you because it'll make you feel so much more comfortable and you'll, your drawings will look better. So what we do is we just add the color in the same direction. You're going to start seeing as you're, I'm not sure if you can see it at home, but anything that's underneath um, is showing through. So I'm seeing a line from a paper I have underneath. So just give yourself a clean surface to work on. If you can, get rid of those eraser goobers so that you don't find some bumps. Maybe it'll just turn out to be more texture. <gasps> Another element of art, my friends. You heard me say it. Okay, so I'm feeling like this is good. Kind of wanting to get to some of the sprinkles so that you don't have to wait so long. Boy, I'm noticing as I'm coloring, my arm's getting a little tired. Maybe I'll give it a break. Sometimes I rest my other hand. Now, if I change my pressure, you'll start to see that the color gets darker. So that's a good way to know. Keep track of yourself to keep the pressure of your hand as you apply it to the pencil. And if you don't do it perfectly, no biggie. It's all part of the learning process. Even adults have to remind themselves of that. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Speed coloring. Okay. So pretty good. So I've colored the same direction. Did I have to go diagonal? No, I could have gone straight up and down. I, if I'm a left-handed person, I could color differently. I could color in swirly circles, no, no problem. Whatever suits your own body. Um, I'm going to go down now into the delicious deep fried cakey donut land. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like if you do swirlies. So I'm applying the same light pressure if I had chosen a darker pressure, it would look darker. Watch how I can add more color. 
Now I'm doing a pretty good job trying to keep in the lines. There's some places where I'm going over, especially over the bottom. It's hard to get it just right. So just practice. If you've had a lot of coffee or a lot of hot chocolate, maybe you might go out of the lines a little more. All right, I'm looking pretty good. One of the careful ways that you can get to the edges so that there's no holidays. What? New word. A holiday is a place where the white of the paper is showing through. And one of the ways to just scooch that out of there is to carefully take your colored pencil and just very, very lightly, and you can turn the page if you need to, just tickle the white spots away. You're still being careful not to go over top or outside of the lines. And if you don't mind those holidays, then leave them. It's all your choice. This is your art. Okay, so pretty good so far. I think I kind of want to make a little shading happen. The way that we shaded the inside of the donut hole earlier by using the pen, I'm going to use my Notice I'm not going in the same direction I started, by the way. Um, I'm going to use my colored pencil a little bit more firmly, going in the opposite direction to kind of cross hatch. Cross hatching is when your lines go one way and another way so that you see less lines and more just smooth color. So, yep. Yeah. It's really fun. You can actually do that with the frosting as well. I'll just show you a little example of that. You can make it look like the little, uh, little sprinkles or whatever it is you've drawn in there. Like they have, like they're having volume, which is another one of the elements of art to think about. Okay, so it looks a little bit like they're casting a shadow on that delicious frosting. Um, and you could make your frosting two colors. You can add purple, you can add whatever you want, you can darken it. That would be great. So finally, we have to think about our beautiful sprinkles. Now you have a choice. I'm gonna make a choice, really easy choice, because I wonder what it would be like to have green sprinkles on my red donut. I wonder why green and red look so good together. Why do they? Think about a certain holiday you know that has a lot of green and red in it. You know the one I'm talking about. That is because those are complementary colors. They're across from each other on the color wheel. Color wheel, such a cool thing. I feel like sometimes you just want to have quiet time. So I'm going to be quiet while I color. All right. Wow, a little focus. A little fun. I am feeling very good about that donut. Uh, you know, I'm feeling like it's done for me for now. If you want to get really crazy and throw a lovely shadow along the bottom, you can go ahead and do that. Um, you can decorate the background. You can add many, many different um, colors or objects. You can put your cat, whatever it is that suits your fancy. Just so glad that you're here today. Again, I'm Nancy, and I'll see you next time.